Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and welcome back. You're watching Women's AM with myself, Hassana, and on the panel today we have sisters Liz, sister Nadia, and our special guest for today is Rachel Hawkes, chair and trustee of Verity. It's great to have you Thank here, you Rachel. Very much. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, really pleased to be here. When I was looking into the charity, I was really intrigued to find that you're you're one of the only charities really that talk about polycystic ovaries. Do you think there's enough information out there for women who are going through this condition? I think it's um it's a balance to find credible information. There's um, a wealth of information available online, but it's not all from trusted sources. Mm. Um, so I think that that's the, that's the big kind of concern that I have as a charity. We work very closely with um, professors and um, trusted experts on the condition to make sure that the information we provide is all verified and um, valid. So there's a lot of information. I think people just need to be... Um, Careful where they get it. Cautious and careful, absolutely. Yep. So Verity is a charity. You provide yeah. um, support and information yeah. um, to people who are diagnosed uh, yeah. with this condition. And I understand part of that support, you have an annual um, conference. Yeah, so what, what are the benefits of this uh, conference that you've um, found in the I past? I think the biggest benefit that women get is, is PCOS is such a kind of, um, it attacks all elements of you feeling feminine and kind right. of as a woman. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest benefits that women get is actually they get into a room of 100 or more other women that have the same condition mm -hmm. and understand what they go through on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of women might feel a bit nervous about coming because they don't want to come by themselves mm -hmm. or, um, you know, it's quite an intimidating thing to come and yeah. face. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people do bring their partners or their parents or a friend to just give them that moral support. So mm -hmm. it's a really nice environment. Um, they also get access to some of the top experts on the condition, um, not just in the UK, but around the world. I mean, I wow. think it's yeah. just really interesting that people are opening up the discussion about this, because as you said, it can be quite difficult. Yeah. You know, sometimes if a woman is unsure where to turn in terms of getting the information, yeah. but also just knowing that somebody else out there is going exactly. through the same things you are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be hearing more about this later on. So let's go straight to our discussion now. Let's go to Hair Views, where today we'll be discussing polycystic ovaries. Polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS, is a common condition that affects how a woman's ovaries work. Millions of women in the UK are affected with this condition. It is thought that around 1 in 10 women have PCOS, which means at least 2 of polycystic ovaries, a raised level of male hormones and reduced ovulation. However, these figures may be higher. So what do we as women and as a community need to know about this condition? How do we know if we have it? And what treatment is available. So really, really interesting discussion here as part of our Women's Health Week. Rachel, I'm going to come to you first. Sure. Just tell us a little bit more about this. What are some of the main features um, that we see with this condition? Um, I think the first thing to be mindful is that not all women with PCOS um, present with the same symptoms. So um, it's very, very varied. So it's not necessary to uh, recognize it in other people um, so to speak and it can be difficult to get diagnosed because of that um, so for example a woman might present with excess facial and body hair um, uh, ad adult acne male pattern hair loss um, infrequent or irregular periods as well, um, depression and mood swings and weight problems as well. See, all of the things you've mentioned, yeah. it's such a kind of wide range of it things. Really For is, some yeah. women, it can be probably very difficult to kind of determine what they're going yeah. through. And I can imagine it could be, you know, quite upsetting as well. I mean, for a lot of women, generally, when they're going through illnesses, it can be quite tough. I mm. mean, Liz, do you think that women perhaps might feel uh, unable to, to go to their, uh, their GPs or their doctors or even speak to anyone about mm. this? Yeah, well, I think actually, yeah, you know, you made a very good point talking about the yeah. conferences, saying that yeah. it actually attacks everything that makes you feel like it a does, woman, yeah. and I think that's true. And, and it can, uh, you know, you know, what we're like anything that's around, uh, you know, our appearance and our femininity. It, it's it, it's it's a hard thing to deal with, and it can be a very very sensitive issue that women are going to have. Uh, you, some women in particular, are going to have problems with talking about. So, mm -hmm. you know, to know there's a charity out there yeah. that's that's going to offer this kind of support, I think, would be you know hugely helpful to many women. Absolutely. I think just the access to the information as well online, yeah. you know, that's definitely a benefit that a lot of women are kind of experiencing, the, the fact that there's almost a community of people out yeah, there nice. that they're able to connect with. Yeah. I mean, let's just talk a little bit more about the symptoms that you might see. You sure, mentioned yeah. a couple there. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, some of the main symptoms? Um, so the main, the main symptoms, so a lot of women with PCOS have higher levels of androgens and testosterone. It doesn't mean they have anywhere near the same level of testosterone as a man does, um, but that level might 
uh, result in things like excess hair, acne, um, male pattern hair loss, so losing the hair on the top of your head or your eyebrows. Um, so those are come very common symptoms. Um, also difficulty um, losing weight or gaining weight really rapidly um, and struggling to lose it once you have gained it. That's a very common system, uh, symptom that about 50% of women with PCOS have as well. Absolutely. Really, yeah. really interesting start to the discussion there. And this is, of course, a live show. We'd love to hear your thoughts on our topic of discussion for today. So do call in. The number will be appearing on your screens throughout this segment. If you have any questions or comments for the panel. I mean, Sister Nazia, uh, Rachel mentioned there some, some symptoms that you might see, particularly difficult, I think, for some women, is this kind of um, unwanted hair that they might mm. experience, whether that's facial hair or other body hair as well. And I think for some women, that's definitely, it perhaps might not be this, the, the, the actual condition, but the symptoms which might cause them more distress. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your thoughts on that? I think it's, you know, there are a lot of illnesses like that you could look at that it, it's not so much as the symptoms, but, but the actual psychology behind what yeah. they're going through, that has more of a devastating effect on them. Yeah. So something like the, the hair loss or the extra hair that they might get, all of these things, they have a huge impact on mm. women. Yeah. And I think when you have also the pressures, external pressures, where if people are not sensitive and then they don't understand that actually there could be medical reason why you're going through this, it's unfortunate you do see people, they will yeah. pick faults without actually realising well, you're, you're doing more harm to that individual. Yeah. They're already probably in a dilemma because unfortunately sometimes this is not detected. A lot of women don't realise they have a problem so it kind of, they, by the time, I think I've read as well that by the time women realise that they might even be experiencing it, it's when they're actually trying to have children. Mm -hmm. So until then it's being completely undiagnosed. Yeah. It can be quite so, a shock as well, yeah. isn't it, to the system, I would imagine. And we were talking about this earlier, about the statistics. I mean, we mentioned one in ten, but um, you suggested it might actually be a little bit higher than yeah. this, isn't um, it? Because, uh, like you mentioned, a lot of people mm. don't actually realise that they have symptoms. So, for example, when I got diagnosed in 2005, um, I didn't realise I had a problem with excess hair. Um, until the doctor actually pointed it out to me. I just thought it was her hereditary problem. Mm -hmm. So until, until you make the connections and you join the dots, you don't necessarily know that there's a, prom a problem to, sure. to know about. Um, and I think that that's a, a, a real key area. It's not to be embarrassed to talk to your doctor firstly, or to talk to other women and just to read and, and educate yourself on it. I think this education and this talking yeah. to the people is really a key factor, isn't it? Because yeah. mm -hmm. it's really scary when you're given, you know, this big, big term and you don't really yeah. know what the implications are and there's that thing of feeling oh I'm the only one and nobody yeah. understands and actually you know there are lots of people that understand yeah. and you know even um, you know the thing that like you were saying about the excess hair or something like that just to be able to say to people that are in the same situation as you yeah. well what do you do about this and you exactly. know have you, have you experienced this or yeah. you know how mm -hmm. did you react in this situation that is sometimes the most valuable mm -hmm. thing isn't yeah. it but I mean of course it is easier to talk to people who are going through the same thing but often you know with illnesses it's difficult to talk to people around you yeah. because perhaps they're not quite understanding where you're coming from on something or could be, as Nazi said, that sensitivity isn't there. Sometimes people make yeah. really hurtful comments, yeah. you know, just generally if you're having a bit of an off day and someone says, oh, well, hang on, you're not looking too good today. Yeah. Yeah. So even those things, it can be quite hurtful. And I would imagine for a woman, you know, who's mm -hmm. going through this condition, it can be even more so because, as you mentioned, it does definitely attack that kind of femininity aspect which, yeah. which we're talking about. I mean, is this something it, you've yeah, experienced absolutely. through your work? It, it, we see so many um, of our members that have really low self-esteem and mm -hmm. really resort to really drastic horrible things um, in order to kind of make, make themselves, themselves feel, feel better, better. Mm -hmm. and for example um, every time I I've mentioned this story quite a lot to people when I'm talking about it because it really brings home a really important point to me is that there was a woman that posted on our forum about um, her partner caught her in the bathroom trying to break open a battery because she wanted to she would prefer to have battery acid scars on her face oh, than the excess hair and I just think that that oh, that's to me like it's it's really important that even if you don't have PCOS, that you know about it because yeah. someone that you know has it mm -hmm. um, and they might be needing someone to talk to mm -hmm. and it's nothing to be ashamed about. Absolutely. Well, a really, really interesting start to the discussion there. Thank you for that. We're off to a quick break now. Do stay tuned after the break. We'll be back to continue our discussion in our main segment, Her Views, where we're discussing polycystic ovaries. We'll see you after this very short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Welcome to Azizi R Restaurant, a unique and traditional restaurant based in the heart of Stoke Newington, right beside the great Azizi R Mosque. We are here to serve you delicious, authentically prepared and 100% halal Turkish food, from incredible cold starters to mouth-watering mixed grills. Azizi R has a unique and friendly atmosphere, with options for floor seating and closed cubicles for privacy with your family and friends. Call us today on 0207 254 7475. Freedom 500. Reed Foundation has embarked on a journey to free 500 orphans through education to help them live a brighter future. For just £20 a month, you can support an orphan and equip them with the learning essentials to free their minds through education. Your donation will give an orphan books, stationery, school fees, uniforms, shoes and a school bag. For more information, visit us online or give us a call. Welcome to Riverside Lounge, the grill and buffet restaurant. Try a selection of intercontinental dishes freshly prepared using the finest ingredients. With an exclusive buffet area offering a variety of tantalizing dishes bursting with Eastern and European flavors. Experience halal dining at its very best with modern and stylish decor and a family-friendly environment sure to leave you with truly unforgettable moments. For a more intimate gathering, try our a la carte menu in our specially designated fine dining area. For sisters looking for a place to unwind, we have an exclusive private women's only zone ensuring there is something for everyone. The Riverside Lounge, guaranteeing a halal dining experience you will never forget. Chicken curry, pasta bake, fish and chips, pizza maybe. What did you have for dinner last night? Every year, more than two million children die due to chronic hunger. Act now. Donate. Orphans in need. And welcome back. You're watching Women's AM with myself, Hassana. And on the panel today, we have our Women's AM regular, Sister Liz, Sister Nadia, and our special guest for today is Rachel Hawkes from Verity. Well, before the break, we were discussing polycystic ovaries. Let's go back to the sisters to continue that discussion, inshallah. So really interesting start to the discussion there. And we were talking about some of the real kind of struggles that women go through. Um, Rachel, I want to come back to you. Why does it happen? And what should you do if you think you have it? So um, there's no definitive cause of PCOS, but it, it's definitely um, thought to link to be, um, sorry, hereditary, so that you um, inherit it either from your mother's or your father's side. Okay. Um, if you think you have it, definitely go and talk to your doctor about it. There's no shame at all, and there's really kind of... Uh, clear steps that they can do to test you mm. for it. I mean, we, we did talk before about the fact that there's a wealth of informa information mm. available online, but sometimes, you know, you kind of almost go online, look at a few symptoms and think, oh my gosh, you know, I've, yeah. I've, I've got it, where it might not necessarily be the case. So definitely, I think seeking that kind of medical yeah. advice um, is, is definitely uh, necessary. I think that's really, Absolutely. really important. We also have um, thousands of women online, literally, for example, on our Facebook page, we have 4,000 women. Um, and people do come and, and post on the page saying, I think I have it for this symptom and, and this right. symptom so they can get a bit of reassurance and mm -hmm. feedback from other women um, before building up the confidence to go to their GP um, and I would say maybe even it can be an intimidating thing to talk about um, and some women feel more comfortable seeing a male or a female GP but actually taking someone in with you can ha be helpful but also writing a list of things that you want to ask the doctor to make sure that you get through it and you can kind of keep on track. Is it a